All right, welcome back to the channel. And it's 7.30 at night right now, and you look outside, it's light out. Daylight savings is here, this is great. People were asking where Charlie was last episode. Well, it's, coy it's like coyote mating season right now, so they're all over the property, and she loves to chase them away and bark at them. And uh, once it gets dark, she'll get to it. I got the radiator here, and I got the fuel tank over there. Two things I need to have done and kind of prepped for, you know, before I can drive the machine around. For the fuel tank, you know, I've, I've dealt with fuel tanks before, like steel fuel tanks before. Last time was on the Z here. It's gonna be a little bit more difficult. This thing is actually quite heavy. Um, I don't know, probably like 80 pounds. So I don't know, maybe I probably take the seat cushions off. That'll lighten it up. I know there's all kinds of tricks though. I've, I've seen people like strap them to tractor wheels to spin them around to help break the stuff off. Like you actually can see this from the back of the, the tractor, so it'd be nice if it wasn't dented. But it's, uh, this is really thick metal. So this isn't like, you can't just stick a magnet on here and pop this dent out. Oh, of course this one's frozen. There we go. Ugh. Yeah, we got some rust on the bottom. I'm, I'm sure this, I don't know if this thing is baffled, but We'll, uh, oh, hi. Yeah. There's definitely a rust scale. And if you come over here, you can just tell that there was sediment sitting on the bottom. So, I got a good light in there. So, yeah, there's, there's some definite junk on the bottom. That's the only thing I can see. So this dent is completely out of it. There's no way I'm gonna to get to that. This one, you know, if this was thinner metal, I could get a pry bar in here and pop it up, but it's so thick, I just do not wanna mess with it. I mean, otherwise I'd have to cut holes and uh, then that just causes other problems. This even attached. This is the seat belt mount, I think. Yeah. Got the fuel tank liner kit in. So this was a generic Summit one. Made in the USA, but uh, it's about half the price of the 415 and the, I forget the other brand. And if you've never done this before, there's like the cleaner where you just clean out the tank. And then this is like an etcher. And then there's this liner, which this stuff is, uh, if it's like the stuff I used before, it's, it's really, uh, once it's in there and set, it's never coming out. All right, so the last step here is I just gotta drain it and then you gotta rinse it all the way out. It's gonna take a while and then it needs to be completely dry before the next step, so. It's supposed to be like 100% dry before the next step. You know, I never know what I'm gonna edit out of a video until later, but I just wanna make it completely clear. So I really lucked out on this tank. You look down there, it's pretty clean. There's not any rust like scaling or flaking off clear. You do not wanna mess around with this stuff. If you do not prep properly, this stuff will start sheeting off into your tank and you're gonna have so many problems, it's gonna be just a disaster. So in, in the case where I had, if I had rust like scaling off in there, 
I, I, I was joking about it before about the tractor wheel, but that's actually a good thing to do on a tank this heavy. A lot of people are going to recommend put, throwing gravel in there. I do not like to use gravel and just because it creates like a dusty, dirty mess and you're trying to clean it up before coating it. So it just, and also the issue here is the space under the baffle is like less than a quarter of an inch. Maybe it's really, really tight in there. Gravel wouldn't go in there. So what I would do, and if, if there was bad rust scale, what I would end up doing is I would pour a bunch of lock washers in here uh, or split washers and those have a nice sharp edge on them and they'll fit under the baffles and then you could uh, vibrate them out on the tractor wheel or some other thing to get them to ro rotate around in there. All right, next step is the fuel tank prep. It says don't use it near pilot lights, so it's probably flammable. This is the first dump out. What's amazing is when I was rinsing it out after the degreaser, it was like crystal clear water coming out. But this is what's coming out now. Oh, it's blue. Wasn't expecting that. Yeah, this might not be enough. It doesn't seem like very much. So yeah, I mean the bottom's coated, but the sides, there's just not enough. So I let it dry for about three or four days actually, it's been a while. And then I dumped two more quarts in and I rolled it around really good, several hours worth actually, because it, it, it flows really slowly. And then now it's just draining out the excess, which there's really didn't, not that much drained out. Some liners actually I've found in the past do not, you're not supposed to do a second coat. But this one specifically said you could but in the you know if i was going to do this again i wouldn't be so cheap and i would have gotten two quarts and started with and i would have been done by now all right i let it dry for about a day i promise this is the last time you're going to have to look inside of a fuel tank can of see it's all blue in there and uh, i think we're good to go here this should last forever i mean this thing's going to be sitting for you know periods of time where I don't, I'm not going to need a dozer every day and it's just nice to know that like even though it's half full like the top half isn't rusting over and dropping rust into the fuel tank. Right, take a look at this. There's probably some kind of gasket under here. I think I just saw Squatch rebuild one of these for a D2 on his channel. Hmm. Still got some cleaner in there. Or is that diesel? Mm, it's a mixture of both. So is there a way to bring this up to be uh, carb compliant? Probably. This thing was actually bent, so I kind of flattened it out with a hammer. not much to see on this and like I said uh, Squatch did a video on this like a week ago so he was a little bit more in-depth than I was you know they have the actual gallon marks on this dipstick which is nice one other thing I did order new furniture to go on it this stuff you could have salvaged like if I really wanted to I could have cut the uh, staples off and reuse the fabric because you know like that's not the best but the seat cushion in the back were both still okay but just the wood's rotten this is like the original style armrest where it's not even an armrest it's like a pad but this is a wraparound one which is supposedly a, a lot more comfortable so I, I ordered both sides to have this I actually found a guy that all he does now is he just makes seats and cushions for antique and old older tractors and, and dozers and that kind of stuff so he had all the plans already ready to go but he's so backed up he said it's probably like end of april may before they'll get here i wasn't planning on going too crazy with the prep for this tank um but now that i think about it i mean this this there's just going to be huge divots out when i paint this 
So I think what the, the rule I'm gonna follow here is like the stuff, like the back of this tank, the tops and sides, and then other stuff like the top of those fenders, and then the hood. I'm gonna spend a few extra minutes and get those nice and smooth. It'll, it'll do a lot to make the everything look better. Like I said, you know, I'm not gonna spend a ton of time on the paint on this machine just because it's gonna go right back to work and uh, it's not like a, an original showpiece. But I think just, you know, the stuff that your eye catches right away, it's worth it. It'll, uh, it'll make it look a lot nicer with not too much more work. Well, this original paint holds up to sanding really well at the old the newer paint comes right off but this the original paint but check this out guys that's the original lettering underneath this let's see uh, Peoria or whatever so I'm gonna try to gently remove this top layer just to see what it says back there <laughs> Yeah, I see it, Caterpillar tractor. So it, it was definitely a Caterpillar. I guess there's no denying it now. Got that pretty clean. This is not spraying well. All right, there's a few spots that uh, I'll have to come back later and clean up. So like in the corners here and uh, like just a couple spots here, I can see some, you can probably catch the light on there and see it'll end up having some pock marks, but overall it'll work out. I mean, you look at the welds on this thing. It's, uh, it's not meant to be a showpiece, obviously. So I'm not gonna go too crazy. Anyway, I guess that's it for this video. This thing's pretty much almost ready for paint. Just needs a little bit of touch up here and there. Let's talk about, I was, I was hoping to do the radiator in this video, but let's talk about that real quick. I'm gonna take a quick look at it here. It's pretty rough. So obviously the oil cooler is already, I already know that shot. I don't really care because I'm not gonna use it. The radiator, I think what my plan's gonna be is I'm gonna pressure test it. I got the setup here to, to kind of run that. If it holds pressure, I'm just basically going to clean it up, straighten out the fins, and then just run it as is. You know, I'll probably paint the shell better, but um, I just, it's, it's going to be, look at these fasteners. It's just going to be not enjoyable to take the uh, core out. Um, if it actually holds pressure though, I'm probably going to go buy some lottery tickets. All right, well, that's it for this one, guys. Thanks a lot for watching. I'll be back soon.